creation of a new information operations technical training school. The first command simply must arm our airmen to outthink, outperform, outpartner, outinnovate any potential adversary. Air Force Basic Military Training has an updated curriculum with a new focus on readiness and lethality. The first command, the Air Force starts here. Hello and welcome to the Air Force Starts Here podcast. I'm your host for this professional development podcast, Jennifer Gonzalez from the AETC Public Affairs team. In this episode, we are excited to be discussing the fact that family and friends will once again be able to watch their loved ones graduate from the Air Force Basic Military Training live and in person. As you likely recall, back in March of 2020, the Air Force suspended attendance to mass gatherings, which included BMT graduations. This was done to combat the coronavirus, which was wreaking havoc across the globe. Now, more than a year later, with the COVID vaccine widely available in the U.S. and cases on the decline, things are beginning to slowly open back up, including BMT graduation. In fact, the first in-person graduation ceremony is scheduled for July 22nd. I got the chance to speak with the commander of the 737th Training Group at Joint Base San Antonio, Lackland, Texas, Colonel Jeffrey Pixley, about how he is balancing the risk to mission, force, and community. Take a listen. Hello, Colonel Pixley, and thank you so much for joining us on the Air Force Starts Here podcast. Oh, I'm so happy to be here, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. All right, so what a year it has been for BMT. It it certainly has. Um, I, I just arrived here a few weeks ago from my uh, previous assignment in Alaska, but I've been watching DMT carefully for like last year, and uh, what a year indeed, that what this team has accomplished in uh, in continuing DMT operations and filling the Air Force's training needs uninterrupted during COVID has been nothing short of astonishing, and, and the chief here and this whole team have just have set the standard for uh, for the DOD. I know that the Air Force and AETC as a whole could not be prouder of what uh, everyone has done there at BMT to make sure that pipeline keeps flowing. But July 22nd is a really big day there for BMT trainees and their families, yes? It is. You know, uh, it was a difficult decision, but absolutely the right decision to... Uh, to not have families attend graduation for more than a year now. And um, the bringing them back on July 22nd was something that everybody has wanted to do, but uh, we had to make sure that we were 100% ready and, uh, and not taking any unnecessary risks uh, for our trainees, for the staff here, for the family members, uh, or for that pipeline. So a, a lot of thought went into it, and uh, and we arrived at this date so we could have a deliberate rollout of, uh, of this very important element of, of basic training. It really is about, you know, balancing that risk to mission, force, and community that General Tullis um, speaks of, the 2nd Air Force Commander. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it is a balance, and, and it's one that, uh, that we know is not a, it's not a formula, and it's not something that's going to be static. July 22nd is uh, the lead up to it and the execution of July 22nd is going to be a learning experience and what we do on July 29th and in August are going to be uh, the result of what we learn and and we we fully appreciate that we don't know how it's going to go uh, but we have a great team that's thinking through all of these issues so uh, we have uh, all the benefits of the families being here. And, uh, and and we're ready to respond if it uh, if it doesn't go as we hope or if, or if we just learn something that we didn't anticipate. It's a pretty complex piece. So what are those safety measures for graduations that's going to be implemented to ensure the safety of our airmen? The, the one that is probably going to get the most attention or has so far is the requirement that our family members to attend the graduation ceremony, it, uh, they have to present proof of COVID-19 vaccination. So everybody who enters the Airmen's Arena for the ceremony will have to show that they've been vaccinated. Uh, and, the, and the second uh, key feature is we are limiting the number of guests per training to a maximum of two per training, which was not traditionally how we had handled in the past. Uh, and, and that's speaking back to us taking this a crawl, walk, run, uh, flooding the arena with every family member who might be vaccinated could quickly uh, overwhelm base, and we want to be methodical about it. So uh, the, the, there'll be social distancing in place, uh, and of course there'll be uh, there will be 
it'll be all vaccinated personnel, but people who want to wear masks will be encouraged to wear masks to, for their own uh, safety and comfort. Uh, and and the uh, the interaction between uh, trainees and their family are going to be uh, are going to be limited uh, depending on the status of uh, the vaccination of, of the airmen themselves. So when an airman or guardian graduates on uh, on that Thursday, uh, whether or not they go downtown for the coveted San Antonio Town Pass will depend on uh, whether or not the, the individual is vaccinated. So but those are some of the measures we have in place right now. And uh, on top of that, we're going to continue to be disciplined in enforcing hygiene, uh, hand washing, uh, standard things that we, they actually used to do even before COVID. This is this, the BMT is, is BMT a lot like a cruise ship and it always has been. It, we put a lot of people in the same place at the same time. There, there are extra measures you have to take all the time at BMT, even absent a, a COVID crisis, just the, the regular flu back in, uh, uh, when I was here in my previous assignment and when the chief was here in his, uh, the flu could come through and disrupt BMT. So we've, we've always had special procedures in place. We're just uh, we're we're doing it as uh, year round now, and 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 we're and we're being vigilant, and we're gonna, and we're going to expect to be frank. We're going to expect our visitors to to be disciplined and vigilant as well, because it's for the benefit of our of our staff, our airmen, guardians, uh, and the training pipeline, as I mentioned. We're still fighting through COVID, and you mentioned that the guests who are coming to graduation are going to need to show their proof of ID. How exactly do the guests provide the required documents? No, I'm so glad you asked that question because we, we actually have a two-stage process to get to this graduation. So the first uh, hurdle that, that uh, the visitors need to get through is getting base access. And, and that's a well-practiced uh, process we've, we've used for years. And our partners here on GBSA uh, are, are restarting that previous process, which includes the standard get the information family members and family members submit their information for background checks and other information to provide them access to the installation. So all that is happening a lot like it did back uh, in uh, previous years. When they get the gate, they're going to have to show they're they're, uh, permitted on base through that process. We are not at the gate going to be checked for vaccination status. That is something we're going to do at the second level, which is in and around the the graduation site itself. So we're we're not going to put that burden on our security forces partners. When uh, the families get uh, to the site, we will then be asking for proof of vaccination. And that is literally, we're asking them to show us the, the paper CDC vaccination cards they were issued when they got their shots. Uh, and I know that that, that is probably a, a burden in some ways, but it's uh, because the safety and, and uh, health of our airmen and guardians and staff is my number one priority. I am willing to, and, and I hope that the family are willing to, to deal with that minor inconvenience of having to travel with that piece of paper because it's that important to us that we get this right. And what's the feedback that you've been hearing from the trainees? They're, they're very excited. They're incredibly excited about the opportunity of families here, and that, that should come as no surprise. What, what may surprise our listeners is that we are enthusiastic about it, too. And it's kind of a point I alluded to before, I, I'm a firm believer that the, the, the Air Force makes an impact. The Air Force imprints on our airmen and guardians at that ceremony, and the family members being there makes that imprint stronger. And uh, when an, an airman thinks back to their graduating moment and, and remembers their mom or dad or sisters or uh, or loved ones in the crowd cheering and crying and holding up signs. There's a there's a, 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 a emotional impact to that that I don't think can be measured. It, and it may not be widely understood or studied, but I'm, I'm a firm believer that that the, the, the how meaningful this accomplishment feels to someone in in the later years in their career is related to how. Uh, how exciting and how emotion filled it is, and families here are a huge driver for that. And, and so, the, and that's from the airman's perspective. From the family's perspective, I'm also a firm believer that if the airman's family gets to come to BMT graduation and sees what they went through, see this place, appreciates the incredible work of military training instructors who guided and, and mentored and inspired their their uh, loved ones through basic training. That imprint on the family of the Air Force, the positivity has a, a direct a correlation to future retention, to recruiting.
supporting of other family members and just a sense of pride in what we do here. And I, I think that's it, it's so important that we do that. Uh, that we can do it safely is a mandatory requirement. It's something that I will, if I could choose between that and safety, that's an easy choice. But I think we're now at a point where we don't have to make that choice anymore. And if we do it smartly, we're going to have that imprinting moment for the airmen, guardians, and their families. And, uh, and it's going to be, the magic is going to be back. For those not able to attend graduation, will you all still continue to stream them Facebook Live? Absolutely. Uh, the uh, the streaming that we've done that we had to do because of COVID is something I'm committed to for the long term because we know that not everybody, even even when we have unlimited guests with that comes one day, there are situations where family members can't be here. And I, I think we have an, an outstanding team here that can put together, and I think it's improving with each cycle, a production that... Uh, that gives some of that, the, the vibe and the feeling and that magic can come through the screen to folks. And we're going to continue uh, to do that. The only, if I could take a minute for a, uh, a really strong advisement to the people who are going to watch our live streams is it is always free through the BMT Facebook page. There are, uh, there are fraudsters and uh, and um, trolls out there who flood pages about BMT with misinformation and links to pay to see the BMT graduation. That is never true. Our real Facebook page is where we can watch that. And if you miss that, you can go to our YouTube uh, page and watch a recorded version of it every week. Never pay to watch a BMT graduation. For after the graduation ceremony, how will off-base liberty work and will it be happening at all? It, it will be happening. The, uh, it's, it's just going to be that one day because one of the uh, changes we made during COVID changed the timing of the uh, departure from basic training as the, as the Airmen and Guardians go off to their, their next training, or their technical training. So it'll be that one day, but um, I'm committed to making that a reality. I think the San Antonio Riverwalk does not look the same unless there's a slick sleeve Airmen walking around in their blues with their family. I just... We, it's going to be just the one day, which I know is is, uh, is not ideal, but uh, we want to continue to make that happen as long as we can do it safely and uh, um, and our airmen can go downtown and have a great visit with our families. I, I'd like to happen. Do you have any final thoughts as we close out? My, my final thoughts are back to where we started. What what the team here, Chief Guyton and and the staff and and the and the commander I replaced did in BMT is so noteworthy and so praiseworthy. And it really wrote this, wrote the book on how to react, how to be agile, how to focus on the things that are important, which is safety and health and accomplishing the mission in a way that I think is not fully appreciated yet. But I think one day there will, there will be books written about what, what was done here and the sacrifices that were made by the military training instructors and their families when we were continuing to ship folks here, we knew we're probably going to test positive for COVID. And we found a way to continue to train and our NTIs continue to come to work every day with professionalism and uh, and a, a, a really a warrior spirit to get this mission accomplished. I don't think we fully appreciate the impact that had on them and their families yet, but, but if if I could leave you with anything, it's that the, this team is phenomenal. They care so much about what they do, and their highest priority is taking good care of the uh, men and women that America's parents and siblings and, and loved ones send us, and, uh, and they deserve a, just a giant amount of praise. I couldn't be more proud of them. Thinking about the year under COVID and closing of BMT graduation, we have to commend and appreciate the families who went virtual and pivoted as we needed to protect our pipeline. Absolutely. And there were, nobody was happy about it, but everybody was, uh, we were in this together and there are huge numbers of us, you know, informal support groups holding each other up as they, as they sent their young, uh, their, their loved ones to basic training and, and you know, put yourself in their shoes. Imagine in the middle of a, uh, of a global pandemic that you put your child on an airplane and send them off to, uh, to basic training. You know, my, all my kids are grown. And even as a, as someone with, as an empty nester with grown children, the COVID crisis was, was incredibly difficult that I couldn't be there with my children during the COVID crisis. Yet we still had family members out there so committed to the defense of our nation uh, that they were willing to send us their, their sons and daughters during the COVID crisis. It just speaks volumes to 
to what this country is and and the level of patriotism and and uh, willingness to sacrifice that still exists. It just it gives me uh, so much uh, pride in in, uh, in our in our airmen and our service. And I know as I get older in my career, soon enough, the chief and I are going to be hanging it up and it off to, to people. The people who raised their hands during this time uh, are pretty special. Thank you, sir, for your time. I was happy to do it anytime. Opening day is subject to change if local conditions and COVID-19 protocols change. For continual updates, follow USAFBMT on Facebook or visit their website at www.basictraining.af.mil. BMT graduations are scheduled for every Thursday at 9 a.m. Central. If you cannot attend the graduation, remember it streams live on Facebook for free. If you do get the chance to go, be sure to wear a hat, sunscreen, bring sunglasses, and wear comfortable shoes. Thank you for the subscribe, stream, or download. And as a reminder, you can follow Air Education and Training Command and the AETC Command Team on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. From our entire AETC Public Affairs team, I'm Jennifer Gonzalez, and talk to you next time on The Air Force Starts Here.